Hi everybody, it's Leslie from Marvelous Art Studios. I'm out on my patio today so the birds might be a little noisy, but I thought I'd show you a little bit about my painting on cork uh, with my new pattern, Painted Cork Blooms. This is one of the different patterns that are available. Uh, if I pan out here, you can kind of see I've got another bigger view of it. And so I'm going to finish painting this petal. I do like to paint them individually, one at a time. And I'm going to start with my main color, which is this beautiful hot fuchsia. I probably can't see that very well, but I'll show it to you on my little palette, my paint palette right here. You can see that. See how cute that is with all those pretty colors in it? So that's just one of those ceramic paint palettes you can buy at any craft store. I think they're three, four, five dollars or something like that. And I've put my colors, what I've started with here is I've got a little bit of hot pink, I call it, it's really called hot fuchsia from the, the bottle that I purchased. And then over here, that's a violet that's kind of dried up. This is a little bit of uh, periwinkle. And then this is magenta. And then over here is the golden yellow. In this particular piece that I've painted, I'll kind of pan out here and you can see where I've got a little bit of the gold in the middle and I'll do that at the very end. Sometimes I like to start in the beginning but this is going to come at the very end. But I'm going to paint the middle of this petal with my main color which is the hot fuchsia pink. You can see compared to what you saw in the palette it dries quite a bit lighter. What you're going to see in this video I hope is just how beautiful this cork is and how well it absorbs but it still lets you control the flow of it so you can get it exactly where you want it. So I'm going to go in just a little bit closer and I'm going to paint this petal and I'm going to start with my the hot fuchsia. See how much brighter it is than the ones that are dried over there? Now this is just one coat of it and you can see where the stitch, the couching lines that are stitched, they just really become the guideline, not to mention they're super pretty and they add such a great dimensional effect. It's almost like quilting it without quilting it. So you can kind of just see how this just absorbs it. And that's just one coat. If I add a little bit more, I can intensify the color by adding secondary coats of it, kind of letting it absorb in each one. I like to use the paint palette too. Uh oh, here comes the wind. I'm in trouble now. I knew I was taking a chance coming out here, but you know, I'm a risk taker, I guess. So that's what I'm doing, but the thread allows me to paint right up to the line. It gives you just that, you know, safety zone, so to speak, than painting it freehand. And I'm going to continue to add just a little bit more of this paint. While this fuchsia is wet, I'm going to add a little more color on it, letting it blend even to a little deeper color. And I'm going to keep it kind of in the center. Then I'm going to add my magenta pink, kind of, see how it turns purple? It's not really purple, but it's more like purple, I guess you'd say. And I'm just going to kind of go around the edges with it. I'm just going to deepen the ends of that, that petal right there on the edges of it. That makes sense. Now, if you don't like the way it's blending, you can pick it up again with the brush and move it and dab it off on the towel, a rag that I've got over here. I don't know if you can see that in the far there far end. And so as I come back in, I'm going to continue to add now a little bit of this periwinkle. It's going to be kind of bluish colored. If it's too strong, then I might temper it down with just a little bit of water, but remember it's going to dry much lighter. So as you brush it in, you can kind of let it sit for a little while. You can brush it out, brush it away from the center what I kind of like to do. I like to clean my brush off in between colors so I don't get too much muddling. There's the neighbor dog, not my dog. <laughs> like they're so perfect, right? Anyway, I'm going to keep on going right around this edge. And then I'm going to put a little more of the magenta pink on top of this top part of the petal and let it blend. And I just wanted a little bit shade darker at the top just to show a little bit more dimension. It doesn't always be, it isn't always real um, evident, it's kind of a subtle technique. 
but I do really like it. So I'll continue to add a little bit of darker color. This time I'm gonna dab just a bit of the violet in my paint well here. And I've got the violet on it and you can see how that is just a nice little shade of darkness that really looks pretty with the pink because it's in the same color family. Pink and purple and blues are all in the same color family. And so I can continue to just lightly dab it on the edges. The thread is just really a nice little guideline as I said. It just gives you a place to kind of get ideas. And then I'm going to let that dry for just a bit at the top. Now at the bottom, here in the center of it, let me get you there. Wrong way, right there. I'm going to take my golden yellow and I'm just going to swipe it up into the pink. And you can see where it's going to turn orange because pink and yellow make orange. You'll see that well if you have a color wheel, which is a great resource to use for for painting. Over here on this other one I'm going to darken it a little bit. It's dry but I can do that even when it's dry and I can still blend it with dabbing my paint brush in water and maybe I want to intensify it over here. So I'm going to put a little water on them first and then I'm going to put my yellow on there just to intensify that center. The other thing that I think is fun about this project is that you can um, add thread colors to enhance what your paint has done and it actually adds just another layer of this third dimensional look that is so attractive on these little placemats. Now this is just the way it is when it's finished and as you can see as I pan out I've painted leaves and I've used the chartreuse green with a little bit of the turquoise on the edges which creates emerald green. So you can kind of see that I can get it in focus. Maybe not. Anyway <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, goodness. Let's pan out just a little bit more. I, I have the certain lens on here. But anyway, it's really easy to make your own shade of green with just the chartreuse color. It's a chartreuse. And with the, the turquoise, which is right here. It's got a little pink on it, but that's turquoise. And that's how I did a little shading of the emerald green. So I'm going to leave this plain for now until it dries and then I'm going to stitch on it and you can either put batting or not put batting. This cork fabric is super stable with just a piece of uh, regular cotton backing on the fabric and I'll finish it with a binding cut on the bias but you probably could also think about other options like how about a serging thread technique with your serger. Be another option to finish them off if you don't want to do a binding. Totally washable this paint and the cork. I know you're going to love it if you just give it a try. Um, I hope this inspires you to think about painting on cork in a whole new way. Thanks for watching and have a great day.